If the virus came from the lab, other considerations would have to be made. Welcome to Radio Munich. The lab theory is no longer considered a conspiracy. It is seriously discussed. During the SARS pandemic of 2003, the pathogen also escaped twice from a Beijing research institute, whereupon nine people became infected and one died. We have to ask what the purpose of gain-of-function research is. It works in the test tube on accelerating the mutation processes of viruses or bacteria in order to be able to better predict emerging infectious diseases and to be able to develop vaccines. Its history goes back to the beginning of the last century and was always to be seen from a military point of view as well, namely as a development of bioweapons. The Geneva Protocol of 1925 and even the ratification of the Biological Weapons Convention in 1975 were too imprecise to prevent the development of human viruses. The reason? Viruses do not have all the characteristics of life. In 2014, the White House imposed a moratorium on gain-of-function research on influenza, MERS and SARS, which was lifted again in 2017 by the National Research Council. For all these years, scientists and bioethics experts on synthetic virology have expressed concerns regarding the dual use of gain-of-function research, that is, civilian and military use. All the more worrying in times of war. With the Hamburg Declaration 2022, 50 scientists from all over the world have publicly spoken out and called for the end of high-risk gain-of-function research on pathogens with global pandemic potential. Conscious of the mission and responsibility of science and research to serve the welfare of humanity, to strive for truth, and to communicate the knowledge gained to the general public, the signatories of this statement wish to call attention to a major threat to human existence that has arisen in recent years as a result of novel bioengineering techniques to modify dangerous pathogens. Through what is generally understood as gain-of-function research, naturally occurring viruses are artificially adapted through changes in gene sequence to facilitate their entry into human cells either via direct gene editing or simply via accelerated evolution in a process called passaging. This creates an enormous potential for a human pandemic, which responsible scientists and researchers have repeatedly pointed out over the past decade. In recent years, such research has been conducted on various highly dangerous pathogens, such as avian influenza viruses and SARS-type coronaviruses. Much of this work has been done as part of publicly funded research projects. The current coronavirus pandemic clearly shows what happens when pathogens are extremely easily transmitted from person to person. Millions of people have died, and the livelihoods of billions of people are threatened or have been lost altogether. This enormous devastation occurred even though the mortality rate of the SARS-CoV-2 virus is comparatively low, at a level of around 1%. However, experiments are currently underway in various laboratories around the world in which much more dangerous viruses such as MERS, Ebola or Nipah viruses are being manipulated via gain of function. Unfortunately, no biotechnology laboratory in the world is safe enough to guarantee that such enhanced viruses will not escape, especially given the functions that may be purposely or accidentally gained and which are often difficult to predict. A catastrophic biosecurity breach with such viruses could be fatal for a substantial proportion of the world population, especially if the transmissibility of highly dangerous viruses via the human respiratory tract is facilitated by genetic modification or some other means. 
We as scientists are well aware of the importance of the freedom of science and research, but we nevertheless appeal to all governments in the world to stop such dangerous gain-of-function experiments. The risk of a global pandemic associated with this extreme type of research and the potential for the extinction of large portions of the world population is simply not tolerable and never should have been. Additionally, we demand that such termination be supervised and continuously monitored by an independent international regulatory agency. Regardless of the particular form of constitution and government a country may have, every leader must act responsibly and contribute not only to the welfare of the population of his or her own country, but also to that of mankind as a whole. Human beings have learned to intervene in the basic molecular building blocks of nature. This creates many opportunities to preserve lives, but also new ways to terminate them accidentally. Let us take this responsibility seriously before it is too late. You have been listening to the Hamburg Declaration 2022 from 50 scientists worldwide to end high-risk gain-of-function research on pathogens with global pandemic potential. My name is Sabrina Khalil, and I wish you a pleasant day, despite the hard facts.